Arctic American tanker CEO Herb Bjorn Hansen joins us now. Herb Bjorn, uh, it's good to have you on. Um, you have a fleet of 20 vessels. You have one that is traversing uh, the Red Sea or I think the Suez Canal, if I'm, I, I'm not um, mistaken now. What is the situation as it's playing out, as you understand it, on the ground? At this time, we have a few main considerations. So that is safety for crew, safety for ship, safety for the environment. And uh, furthermore, we get a very strong support from the United States. As you may know, we are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we, this is a very complicated matter. And all major decisions associated with this, uh, they come onto my table. And what we see now, there are too few ships. And that means that ship prices go up and freight rates go up because we need to divert the ships, say, from America to China via South Africa. In the past, we went from America into the Mediterranean and through the Suez Canal, and we avoid that now. It is okay. a complicated matter, but we are working in this area extensively. So you're already seeing in real time that insurance costs and shipping rates are going up as you divert and others divert vessels uh, around Africa. How much is this going to impact delivery timing and supply chains and perhaps even directly energy prices now? It will uh, impact uh, the total time from America to China around uh, South uh, South. Uh, uh, Africa is about 10 to 15 days longer than going through the Mediterranean and through the Suez Canal. So it will impact uh, uh, freight rates, it will impact uh, uh, the ship prices. And we, our main customers, are the biggest oil companies in the world ExxonMobil, Shell, British Petroleum, etc. And they will have to foot the bill when uh, insurance costs go up. Uh, in the end, uh, you know, it will end up on the table of the consumer. Yeah, and, and Herb Bjorn, you said earlier this year that high spot rates were going to help you and your company pay off debt, eventually raise dividends within two years. How does this situation affect that? It is going very well forward. We uh, will become debt-free within a year or so, and uh, that will enable us to raise our dividends, and we are a dividend company, and we have paid dividend for 104 or 105 quarters, and we shall continue to pay a dividend. What we are dealing with here, with here is a risk management question, and our main profession, that is to manage risk. That is our work, and that is our focus, mm. and that is what we have done all our life. So in light of that, when we talk about managing risk, I mean, this is an area of the world, the Middle East, the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, that has seen its fair share of risk over the decades. How does this compare to other in incidents we see? And as the U.S. Navy and other countries beef up security with Operation Prosperity Guardian in the region, how do you expect this to end? We, uh, we are doing business in the Middle East all the time because that is w where we find our cargo. We have a lot of business with Iran, which is a close uh, ally of the United States. And we have a lot of business with Saudi Arabia and all the countries in that area. And we are used to managing risk because uh, whether we like it or not, we are in a risky business. But that is our profession, to manage risk. And we have done that uh, successfully. And, uh, you know, we, we are used to it. And uh, this business we, in which we are involved is not a business for nervous people. Okay. They should find something else to do.